Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, so welcome to the SNA Technologies uh, Alumni event uh, 2023. Um, so this uh, you know, alumni has been formed for the the people who got uh, trained uh, or uh, you know who got engaged with the SNA technologies. Uh, but lately we have been opening up this uh, event uh, for everyone. So that's why I think you might have seen that uh, uh, this uh, invite has been going into the going to everyone. Okay. All right. Uh, um, so let's talk about uh, what's new in the TOGAF 10. Okay. So the first and uh, foremost change that we have seen in the TOGAF 10 is the documentation structure has changed. Right. So now the TOGAF standard has been um, classified into two uh, fundamental content and uh, some series guides. Now, fundamental content uh, is, is the content that is coming for years, like, uh, you know, TOGAF 8 or even, even before, and then 9. And so it's been there, uh, you know, for years. So this is a more stable content. So that they made it as a fundamental content. And uh, series guides, so these are some best practices um, that, uh, you know, some of the members have identified. So these kind of these are kind of a little volatile, right? So these are the best practices that uh, some members have found. This, but this may change. This, you know, you may come up with some, you know, other best practice. Uh, so these guides may may be changing. So these are the you know the in the fundamental content uh, we have introduction and core concepts, um, architecture development method, ADM techniques, applying the ADM. Architecture content, which consists of again three things like uh, the meta model and then uh, the enterprise architecture capability and governance, uh, sorry, um, the repository and uh, the enterprise continuum. These, so the meta model, enterprise continuum, and repository, these three are part of the architecture content. And uh, the architecture capability and governance has been separated out uh, as a separate one. Okay. And then there are about uh, six, 26 uh, series gu guides uh, which are incorporated in the TOGAF 10. Most of them uh, are the guides that are coming for years. So earlier in TOGAF 9 version, uh, those guides, those uh, you know best practices were part of the core TOGAF specification itself. But now they had uh, included the whole series guide as a part of the TOGAF 10 content itself. So, um, uh, you know, uh, so there are about uh, 26 guides uh, as of now, uh, which are incorporated in the TOGAF uh, 10, okay? So you can, um, you know, download this, this content uh, from the Open Group website as well. Now, let's look at uh, some of the changes uh, that came in in the, um, uh, in the TOGAF 10. So earlier we used to have some numbering convention, right? So dot one, dot two versions, and then one dot zero if approved and all. Uh, they removed that uh, the numbering convention, <clears throat> and then they introduced the the terminology called draft and approved, right? So draft means uh, which is under revision, which is not approved, and approved means it's it's been reviewed and approved. And then uh, some, so we used to have nine steps in the uh, in the BCD phases in the business application data and technology. Um, so those nine steps uh, were there, but the, the order, the, the step number has been removed. And, um, and then, so uh, that's one of the change uh, that they made. And then uh, the material is added to identify the potential need uh, to adopt the content framework. So they had, uh, so earlier uh, we used to have, uh, you know, core and extensions, uh, but now they had removed that, uh, the core and extensions. So every meta model is, uh, is a core or it's what needed uh, for the organizations, right? And uh, some kind of uh, adoption is also suggested to support the agile uh, enterprise architecture delivery style and all, okay? 
And also a cross-reference is added to the series guide, like a practitioner's approach to developing the enterprise architecture following the ADM. So they, in that guide, they had uh, provide some guidance on how enterprise architecture can be developed uh, using the ADM uh, for agile architecture and all. Okay. And um, uh, another concept has been introduced, uh, which is the alternatives for the architecture. So in, in reality, we may not have one uh, target architecture per se, right? So we may have to uh, encounter uh, or come up with some uh, multiple alternatives for the target architecture. And then um, those alternatives uh, uh, can be, uh, you know, um, you know, has to be, you know, you have to do some analysis and uh, find a, either a combination of those alternatives or one of the alternative, which may be, uh, you know, best for the organization. And uh, so things like that. So, uh, you know, um, so those are the things. And then uh, some reference to the guidance on the use of uh, capability maturity models is removed um, because, you know, the maturity models uh, is no longer part of the TOGAF. And uh, some guides have uh, been uh, developed for uh, ornation mapping, uh, a technique, uh, how to develop the ornation maps and all. And some information mapping is also added for guidance on the information mapping. Descriptions of the process modeling and uh, use case analysis are uh, simplified. And uh, some structured analysis uh, is changed to the reference to the business capabilities instead of the business functions. And then um, a sequence of the list of techniques is changed to reference more logical sequence. And um, the section on the you know, required service granularity level boundaries and contracts has been removed. I don't know why they had removed it, uh, but uh, you know, they had removed that section. And then uh, business services and products are added to the list of the contents of the target uh, business architecture. And um, earlier the products was not there, uh, so that's been added. And then description of the business services is expanded a little bit more. Uh, and then uh, the information maps is uh, added, applying the information maps. And uh, description of the use case models is simplified to remove duplication. And then the bullet case uh, class models is changed to logical uh, data model or uh, class model. Okay. And then um, the description of the node connectivity diagram and information exchange matrix are removed because they are not generally applicable. So those two artifacts have been removed. And um, the, a new guide has been added on uh, how to develop the customer master data management. So for the information architecture, for the data architecture especially. So MDM is, is one uh, critical activity that most of the organizations are uh, embarking on. So they gave some guidance on how to develop this uh, master data management, especially for the customer. And then some examples of generic industry reference models are removed uh, because the examples are no longer current. And then the step name is the change to create, update the architecture definition document uh, because the document may already exist. Um, so because uh, you know architecture definition document may not be always a new one to create, right? So some things may be coming from the previous situations or previous initiatives. So you may be updating or modifying that uh, those documents. And then uh, the implementation factor assessment and uh, deduction matrix has been renamed uh, to implementation factor catalog. Okay. And um, the sentence, the solution building blocks are created based on the candidate roadmap components uh, from the phases BCD is added uh, in the opportunities and solutions. And then uh, the governance framework uh, is added to the list of the architecture inputs and uh, business scenarios is also expanded. And uh, the reference to the Volair website for that uh, requirements management, that has been removed. And then, um, so as, we, as I mentioned, core and extensions have been removed. So it is all one, uh, the metamodal entities, and then uh, and the relationships between the the metamodal entities have been updated 
uh, for some of the relationships and also now it's called as a enterprise uh, meta mode right so these are uh, some of the changes in the enterprise uh, the meta model so the new meta model entities are added um, so like uh, the application service and uh, business uh, information and uh, the meta model entities uh, with the revised uh, the description and the definition um, are been uh, added um, so these are some of the things uh, which have been uh, modified or uh, you know uh, revised so um, and then um, the business service business capability contract um, and then uh, data entity function location uh, and uh, logic um, logical application component logical um, um, the data component logical technology component objective physical application component physical data component uh, physical technology component process product uh, service uh, quality value stream and all. these are the things uh, um, that are modified and uh, the, the some of the things that are modified are, uh, are removed or application component uh, information system service uh, the service technology component and all. okay and uh, 